guys didn't chimp out on this thing. You went pretty crazy. It is ah, gorgeous. Ah, I just ah, love it. Ah. I'm gonna call that 2.346. So we got our first cam bearing installed and um, it went pretty easily. So what we're gonna do in now, we opted for these Durabon bearings and this is actually wider than the factory bearing. So it offers some more support for our cam and they're uh, quite significantly larger. It is, so, so the factory ones are 641 wide and they did that to save every last little bit of bearing friction and gas mileage and stuff. And we don't really care about that last little bit for what we're doing. We want this thing to live a nice long life. So we are going with the wider bearings, the third design bearings, and we're doing it with this handy dandy Summit cam bearing knocker. Made in the USA, USA seal, super awesome. Just floats in there. The mandrel is sized specifically for the cam bearing. So it just like, you know, slide in like that and you clock it, you know, with the hole so it aligns with the uh, the oil hole and the the, uh, the saddle there itself. And then the cone goes up towards the back and everything's nice and perfectly centered. So we're gonna keep going with it. Heck yeah, let's get to it. All right. Dude. All right, so we just pounded in some cam bearings in this thing with the rotating assembly inside. It's actually not terrible to do as long as you have the right tools to do it. Now, number five, four, three, and two, no problem because you have the cone on one side to center it, you smack it, everything goes in exactly the way you want it. The problem is you get all the way out on number one, you don't have the cone to really align it and you could be a little off, up, down, side, side, whatever, not good. And the problem with that is, is you'll put your cam in, you know, with five, four, three, and two, spinny, 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 no problem. Then you go to put your cam in after you put number one in, no spinny, no good. So we have worked and we've developed this handy dandy new guide for doing the, the cam bearings where the number one, no problem. You bolt this thing up to the front, it goes right up to where your cam retainer plate normally goes. And then it is actually has a register in it to fit the back side of this tool and this so that everything hits home. Pretty awesome deal. So we've got all our cam bearings installed. Um, I got the cam cleaned off, lubed up and ready to go. Let's slide this thing in and um, see if it spins over freely and then yeah. we can proceed with the I process. I mean, if we did our jobs right with the cam bearing knocker, got all the cams in, you know, all the bearings nicely, you should rock. So when putting in a cam, you kind of just want to do this real gingerly. And this thing doesn't have a crazy base circle on it, so it should slide right in. All right, I'm getting the final one fed back in. All right, we are rocking. We're spinning? Yep, I can spin spinning. that with just my fingers. That means the cam bearings are all square, installed correctly, and um, means we can move on with the process. I wanna get back to the thing real quick is cam bearings, not that hard. Two people, great. I mean, what did it take us, 40 minutes? Yeah, it's, uh, we, we rolled right through them. Like it was, um, yeah. it went really well. And we installed, so we installed them all from the front of the engine. You know, I went ahead and marked them to index the oil hole so I could visually see where it needed to be. Then I used my Sunex four finger grabber, dropped the bearing in down in there and then maneuvered them around, put them on the tool. We kind of used the clock method to Brian counterclockwise or clockwise to get the oil hole sent up. And then once it was lined up, we sent them home into place. And then you have a pick. So that's basically what you put in there to make sure that you know your the oil hole in the bearing will actually go down inside the block. It just it's a nice, nice check. So if it's getting around that, it's gonna feed your bearing. Yeah, so with that, we're ready to put a back cover on, barbell, get our front timing cover on, our cam thrust plate. We uh we got some stuff to do, so let's get Cylinder to it. Cylinder heads. And then the cylinder heads. Oh, I'm so excited for that. All right, guys. So um, with that, on to the next one. So what I'm getting ready to install now is our Summit Racing Billet Barbell. So the factory one you guys saw earlier in the video is plastic. Basically the purpose of this, if the filter would get plugged up, this is the bypass. So what happens is a lot of times those, if that in the event that happens, it should never, but they break and you know, you get some plastic in the motor, that kind of deal, way better than metal. Well, this thing will not break. So, um, you know, with regular oil changes and maintaining your 
high performance LS, you should never have that problem, but we like to replace it with a billet one. So billet. it's blue. Yes, it's nice and shiny. I can appreciate it. Our barbell is installed. So with all that, you know, the cool part about we're putting a whole new brand new cover on the back of this with a fresh rear main seal. So, and it comes with its own replacement bolts. So we're gonna go ahead, grab that. So with our rear cover ready to go on, I only have a couple bolts in it to keep the gasket on it. And you go ahead and you leave this plastic donut in the rear main seal and that'll pop out as you push it on. So you just take it here, line it up around the crank and our rear main seal is installed and we know our gasket is in the proper place. Nice. So go ahead and start a couple bolts. And then I'm gonna pull this donut off here and then I'm just gonna look at my rear main seal. I can see I actually have a spot that I rolled it a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a pick and fix that. But it uh, it is no big deal. It happens to the best of us. The only time it's a problem is if you leave it like that. And the seal looks good, so I'm gonna proceed. Rock on. So I'm just getting our cam retaining plate installed, and then I'm also gonna be installing one of the Trick Flow W block adapters and W block. Yeah, timing chain damper it's called is you know that's the other name for it. So it, it's a really cool, and we mentioned it a little bit earlier, and you're gonna see the real purpose of it once we put the timing chain in, but it really keeps things from whipping. This particular block was not equipped uh, with the bosses for you know what this will do, but you're gonna see what it does here in a second, and it's pretty awesome. Yes. So, I'll hold this thing up here. Get these started. Grab our last bolt. Throw some Loctite on it. Go ahead and get all these snugged up. And then we'll look to see what our torque spec is and I'm gonna to torque them to spec. So before we go ahead and throw all the timing stuff on, we're gonna put our bottom timing gear and our oil pump drive on this thing. It's a two piece. So it's one of our Summit Racing timing sets. I really like it. Now we are gonna set this up at zero and Brian's gonna explain why we're doing that. Right. So Pro LS cams and many cams these days actually have the advanced ground into the cam. So when you're taking a look at your cam card, take a look for advance. It's likely gonna be ground into the cam, meaning you're still gonna go just dot to dot on the timing chain set that you use. Normally it's you know used with like an LS2 chain or something like that, that's more common. But if you've got you know an adjustable set like this, make sure you're going dot to dot knowing that the cam actually has the advance already ground into it you know, from the factory. Yeah, because if you didn't and you say you wanted, oh, you know, a lot of guys like to just put four degrees advance in a cam regardless of what they're putting in. What they would be doing then is they'd be adding four on top of the three I've already got ground into it, so they'd have seven. And that's a little much for this application. Yeah, yeah it would be. <laughs> so, got that on there, slides nice on. I'm just gonna grab a rubber mallet and knock this bad boy on. All right, so we could use a, a mallet if we wanted to to knock this thing on. What we're gonna use instead is, it's actually a Summit oil pump primer. Uh, it's, it's designed to, well, just prime the engine prior to uh, startup, but it also works really good going over the snout of this thing and just giving it a few love taps. Solid. Yep. Rock and roll. Nice and bottomed out. Then we can go ahead, throw our oil pump drive on, grab our primer tool again. Nothing is nice and seated. And next thing up is gonna be what, oil pan? Yep, uh, pickup, oil pump, and oil pan. All right, there's so much America here going on, it's crazy. So we are gonna be putting on a Made in the USA timing chain that's gonna spin our Made in the USA Pro LS camshaft, which is also gonna spin our Made in the USA Melling 102.95 pump, USA. Yeah, so it's so one of the things about the pumps on, on an LS, they're actually you know one-to-one, -one, they're driven you know, right off the crank. So they turn very, very high RPM. These engines love to turn 7,000 RPM, 8,000 RPM. The only problem is you're spinning this little guy at high RPM. If it was a factory pump, they start to cavitate usually around 6,000 RPM. And that's when you really need your oil pump to be working good. Melling does a really great job when they design these things. So cavitation isn't an issue. When you're sitting there at redline 7,000 RPM or more, 
no issues. You know that you're going to be getting nice steady flow without any of the froth. So another benefit of the Summit Pro LS uh, oil pump primer is the fact that it can actually support the gears inside of your oil pump. They will have a tendency to just walk and do all sorts of weird things when you're trying to install, which you can deal with that if you want, or we can just go ahead and use this tool, slide it in, get everything nice and clocked, and go and make an attempt to get it onto our crank like that. Perfect. Mm, very nice, very nice. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of Loctite, throw it on our oil pump bolts, and get this thing torqued down. All right, so where we're at right now is we've got the lower timing gear on, we have the oil pump drive on, and we have our timing chain and gear and chain and everything. It's all, all good. So one thing you'll notice is it's a 24X engine. It's one of the earlier engine. You can tell that because it's got the single pole over here. And we are just going to go dot to dot with this thing. And it's just gonna go on so easy, just because it's just how things work. All right, so we just hung the uh, upper gear and the timing chain on everything. And we are dot to dot, as we mentioned before, because Advance is already designed into the cam. We are just gonna go ahead at this point, go ahead and put some uh, cam bolts in it, and we're solid. One of the things that we're gonna do with the TrickFlow damper adapter is press out the metal bushings here. It's actually a fairly common damper, but the metal bushings inside are incompatible with the rest of the kit. So we have to punch these out from the plastic. It's pretty simple, 11 millimeter bolt, another bigger socket, uh, pomegranate vise, life is good. Aha. And voila. The bushing's out and it's gonna go perfect, just like the rest of our assembly here. Brian went ahead and got our W block ready. I'm gonna get our cam gear bolted on with some of our Summit um, Pro LS cam bolts. You know, we like to replace them every time we put a new cam and cam gear on. So I'm gonna get that bolted on, our W block on, um, and then we're gonna be ready to oil pump, pick up, and uh, timing cover. So we're moving along quite nicely. All right, so even without the W block, that chain is tight. That thing is awesome. That is not no cheap off-brand something something. That's a very, very nice timing chain. Nice, nice. This thing is nice. All right, so why did we put that in there? The chains, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand RPM, whatever they do, they start to wave around and do some weird things, and timing chains do break. The earlier engines and a lot of the truck en engines didn't come with the dampers. This style came on LS2s, and we convert everything to this that we can. It keeps the chain in alignment and keeps them from breaking. Uh, the later engines like the LS3 came with a tensioner, which looks cool. It sounds like it might be a good idea, but it's not. They actually break. Uh, so we actually take an LS3 and backwards convert it to this LS2 style block. And with that, let's go ahead and put some oil pumps on and... Uh, break the crank bolt loose. Mm -hmm. All right, so something pretty cool about the LS pumps is they've got this gear rotor style dealio inside, but it makes it a little bit weird to try to fit it over the crank. You have to spend a little bit of time going back and forth. So we have this handy dandy Summit Pro LS oil pump primer that we can just slide in there like that. And then oil pump pick up towards the top, Go back in there. Just kind of helps with alignment. Boom, all right, now we're ready to bolt it down. Grab some Loctite. And just like a lot of this other stuff, we're gonna to torque these to 18 foot pounds. Yeah, so for this particular build, so this motor is actually, this is not a swap. It's not going back in an LS powered, you know, factory vehicle. It's going in a Ford. Yeah, so, you know, a little sacrilegious, but we love to see it. So it's going in a 78 F100, and for it to clear, it needs one of our Summit swap pans. So we have our sw Summit swap pickup, um, I've already gone ahead and kind of messed with the windage tray a little bit and made sure it fits, fitted the pan. I'm really happy about that. So yeah, the thing fits good. We're gonna get it bolted on and then get our pan on here. And um, yeah, we're ready to start putting the top end together. But we can put a timing cover on it. Okay. 
I'm gonna get some assembly lube. We're gonna go ahead and throw that into the oil pump itself to make the insertion of the O-ring flawless. All right, so this is the, um, the nut that you have to have off the windage tray back over here. I love when a good plan comes together. Oh, man. And that's the one thing I like about our swap pans and all this jazz, is that we use the dual bolt design. Yes. Versus the single stock LS. I don't know if you guys have ever had the dreaded um, your oil pump pick pickup falling off. I've experienced it, it's not a good time. But yeah, so with our swap pans and our pickups, we go to the two tab design because the oil pump provisions have holes for two bolts. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the last windage straight bolt. It's good, it's good. Yep. All right, um, with that, let's go ahead and put some oil pans on. Rings like a bell. This, for whatever reason, is actually not tapped from the factory. Some are, some are not. Don't know why, but some are not. Try to put that in there, will not go. Don't worry about it. So, a lot of times what happens if you don't torque these and kind of, you know, do a crisscross pattern and work your way in is um, you can distort the oil pan, you can get a leak real easy, you can even like crack this thing, wild yeah, they, things they can crack. happen. Yeah. yeah, with that, all our oil pump bolts are torqued except the ones on the bottom of our front cover, which- uh, And now we get to put the thing back on an engine stand. All right, gang, we're gonna do something I prefer not to do, but we don't really have much of a choice and neither do most of our customers when it comes to doing a cam swap in your garage. We have to scrape the decks on this thing, otherwise our head gaskets aren't gonna seal. So we've done what we can with what we got in terms of stuffing towels down the cylinders, uh, down the lifter bores, down the valley, you know, down the front, inside of the, the cover. And the best thing we're gonna be able to do is use our handy dandy Milwaukee vacuum to vacuum as I'm going over the deck to try to catch every little bit before we get anything down the cylinders. After that, of course, we're gonna do everything we can with uh, carb cleaner, brake cleaner, something like that, clean out the cylinders, vacuum. We're gonna go crazy with all that stuff, but just do the best you can with this, folks. All right, here we go. Kick it. <laughs> 